For anyone who has never heard of Marvel, this is Stan Lee. Long before Marvel's films hit their golden age, Lee was immortalizing himself by appearing in nearly all the films ever adapted from Marvel material. His appearances were a Marvel trademark, always noticed, greatly loved, and always memorable despite often appearing on screen for less than a minute. Now that's got me thinking. What are some other examples of tiny cameos making a world of difference in the films they're in? We often talk about cameos in films, but people's definitions of cameo are tough to figure out. Alec Baldwin's incredible scene in Glengarry Glen Ross apparently counts as a cameo, but he gets nine minutes and a huge monologue to make himself memorable. I want to go closer to Stan Lee's level. So I'm going to go for cameos that lasted three minutes or less in their respective films. So, here are my top five minor cameos in cinema. Number five, Eminem in Funny People. I'll be honest, I did not like this movie very much. When I first heard about it, I thought it was going to do for Adam Sandler what Greenberg did for Ben Stiller, or what The Wrestler did for Mickey Rourke. And the first half really does feel like it's going to do that, but soon enough, the film puts those ideas by the wayside, and we get some comedic misunderstandings and dumb arguments that just makes everything fall apart. But for one instant, we get a cameo that I remember caused everyone in the cinema to gasp in surprise. Rapper Eminem slips into the film and gives a thoughtful, grounded performance for two minutes, and it becomes more memorable than anything else in the movie. You can argue that he was barely acting as he's playing himself, but I disagree. He is acting in the scene. Just look at how he screams at Ray Romano for taking his picture. Aside from that, his scene really felt like it was touching on the kind of pathos that comedies never even dared to touch at that time. We wouldn't get such a combination of comedy and drama until shows like BoJack Horseman years later. So here's to Eminem, challenging the boundaries of comedy and being the best part of a mediocre film in just two minutes. Number four, Olu Jacobs in The Dogs of War. Both my fans will remember that I made a video about great scenes in movies that I did not like. The number one choice was the scene in John Irvin's The Dogs of War, where the main character goes through customs in the country of Zangaro under a false identity. His cover is pretty weak, and the customs officer seems to realize that Walken is lying. But instead of arresting him or interrogating him, the official takes him to the back room and goes through all his belongings, taking a cut of everything while the main character watches on. It is a scene that I love watching. The atmosphere is perfectly done, well written, and well acted. Not just from Christopher Walken, but also by Olu Jacobs, the customs official. And since I can't remember ever seeing him in the film again, I could be wrong, of course, but I think he deserves to be on this list. Number three, Christopher Maloney in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. One of the many things that I love about this movie is how it's got more crazy cameos than a Wes Anderson film. We get people like Vern Troyer, Harry Dean Stanton, Cameron Diaz, Gary Busey, and even Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. But above all these cameos, there can be only one. And that man is Christopher Maloney. You're probably used to seeing Maloney playing a sinister criminal in Oz, or a hot-tempered detective in Law & Order SVU. And this cameo is about as far away from either of those other characters as you can get. In this film, Maloney plays Sven, a hotel clerk that has to deal with a bullish police officer's temper when he's lost his reservation. 
we get to see him calmly try to deal with the tirade, and then we also get to see his inner monologue, gloating over how much he's enjoying this one-time power over a police officer. So, of course, it thrills him to help a scummy-looking guy like Raoul Duke get his room even as he cuts in front of the police chief. Maloney clearly had a lot of fun playing this role, and I never get tired of him flaunting his authority just to trigger this random dick screaming in his face. Number two, Joseph Egger in For a Few Dollars More. Most of you probably don't know what I'm talking about with this scene, but any fan of the Dollars trilogy knows and appreciates Joseph Egger. He first appeared as a supporting character in A Fistful of Dollars, but this cameo in For a Few Dollars More is almost just as memorable, if not more so. This is one of the funniest scenes of any film that I have ever seen. Joseph Egger plays a kooky old man who calls himself a prophet. For some strange reason, Clint Eastwood's bounty hunter character decides to consult this prophet on the identity of the main character. What follows is a wild rant, even as we see just how a set of train tracks have driven this man insane. It's the funniest scene in the movie. From the moment that I saw this film as a teenager, I always cracked up laughing at Joseph Egger's hysterical cameo. And number one, Leland Orser in Seven. I had to look up this guy's name, but he is responsible for one of the most disturbing scenes I've ever watched in a film. Just to remind anyone who hasn't seen Seven, two cops are chasing a serial killer who targets people based on their committing one of the seven deadly sins. In the case of Lust, the killer targets a prostitute and forces one of her clients to help him kill her. Leland Orser is only in the film for two minutes, but his terrified confession of what happened is the definition of horrific. We don't see any actual gore, but we don't need to. We find out what he was forced to do, we see what he was forced to use, and it never fails to disturb me. Even in a movie as great as Seven, the biggest scare comes from a man who is having a nervous breakdown explaining something we didn't actually see. It was the first moment of the film where I realized that Seven wasn't just great, it was one of the best films I've ever seen.